In this video, we're going to set up a fresh new AI coding setup using Miniconda. We will install VS Code and Cursor. We'll learn how we can install Python with a Miniconda environment, which makes our life so much easier. We'll take a look at useful extensions. We'll also install Node.js for full stack web app development. We'll learn how to manage Conda environments. And most importantly, we will learn how we can use install AI tools such as GitHub Copilot and Chat, Cursor Copilot++ and Chat. If you'd like to explore my other LLM related coding videos, you can find them at my website, echohive.live. Link will be in the description. So we're going to start by installing Miniconda. I'll put the link in the description. I am on Windows, so I have found the Miniconda download link. And I'm just going to click this and download it. Once it is downloaded to my downloads folder, I'm going to double click on it and just go through the setup process. Now, the important thing here is to select the add Miniconda to my path environment variables. Make sure the selected. Even though it says not recommended, you can follow the other recommended option, but I'm going to check this and install it. Okay, our Miniconda installation is complete. I'm going to test this by starting a command prompt by typing command prompt in the uh, search bar. And in the command prompt, I'm going to type in Conda list to make sure this Conda was installed. And I can see that it was. I can also do Conda-V and I see that Conda has been installed. Next up is VS Code installation. So I'm going to search for VS Code download and click on the download Visual Studio code for Windows. Once it is downloaded, I'm going to click on the installer and go ahead with the installation. I'm going to check this add open with code action to Windows a file, explore, a file context menu and directory context menu. So if I have a Python file or a code file or a directory, I can right click and open it with the VS Code. And the rest of it is the same. And I'm going to just install it like this. And right after this, we'll check out some extensions and install cursor and see about on the environments and how to install Python. Yeah, our VS Code installation is complete. Let's uh, launch it. Uh, when it first starts, it gives you some options to customize. I'm actually going to skip this process. I'm going to go to my extensions tab and I'm going to install this first uh, Python language support. And then I'm going to install Performant Features Server for Python and VS Code. They're both installing at the same time anyway. I will also install Live Server to serve HTML pages. And then I believe I'm going to search for a debugger or Python debugger. And uh, that is also being installed with the or, uh, original extension we've selected. So this should be uh, enough for now. Maybe uh, we'll check out if we run into any that we need. So I'm going to create a new Conda environment with a Python installation. I'm going to go and click on new terminal. And here I'm going to go to this drop down and click on man prompt. And here I'm going to Type in conda create dash n. This is the command to create a new environment. And then my name of my environment, which is, I'm just going to call it basic. And I'm going to specify Python version 3.10. You can choose. Okay, actually, when I first ran this, uh, it said that conda is not recognized. Uh, so I actually had to restart my Visual Studio code. Uh, and then it worked. So remember that. Also, I've searched for VS Code in my search bar and right click and said pin to taskbar so I can easily access it. So now I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And so this environment can be installed. Soon we'll also look at how we can enable uh, GitHub Copilot and things like that too. Okay, now our environment is installed. We can say conda activate basic. And we see that our basic environment has been activated. We can say conda deactivate from the terminal and we can deactivate it. We can also do control shift D and search for Python interpreter. And we select this one, select Python interpreter and refresh. The environment and now we see that we have a basic environment so now our id is pointing to that python installation with an isolated environment when we do pip installations in this environment this will be separate than other environments if you need to create a new environment we'll just repeat up this process so the things to keep in mind is that you can activate your environment here by typing conda activate name of the environment and let me go ahead and create a new command prompt and automatically when i create a new command prompt from here as you can see that it switched automatically to using basic environment because I have already selected the environment in my IDE by doing control shift P and selecting the basic. In the past year and a half, I worked on over 200 interesting and unique projects, each featuring large language models and uh, Python applications, sometimes full stack web apps, and made a free video about all of them. But I also offer exclusive code downloads to my patrons for all the projects. And if you do become a Patron, then you'll have access to all the code downloads plus exclusive videos that I create and more live streams and chats in the future.
you will also be supporting my project. And I also have some tiers. Uh, if you wanted to get in touch with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, take a look and thank you for your support. Let's go ahead and quickly set up cursor as well. As you know, you don't need cursor. Absolutely. Use Visual Studio Code. But if you want cursors, AI first code editor, which do help a lot, then uh, let's go ahead and install it. You do have to sign up for it. And there, you can find their pricing, but uh, you can also use the free version. Once we install Cursor, we'll see how we can import our extensions and stuff like that. So I believe this will be useful. Once the Cursor is downloaded, I'm going to start the installation. I'm going to, uh, for keyboard, I'm going to leave it at default PS code. You can specify a non English language. Uh, we're going to leave code base wide embeddings enabled. And for command line, we want to choose install Cursor so it doesn't clash with Visual Studio Code. This is we can. This is how we can launch cursor if we need to from the command line. Let's command successfully installed. We're gonna continue. It's gonna ask us import our Visual Studio Code extensions, and we're gonna actually import them. And as you can see now, our Visual Studio Code extensions, which we installed, is are being imported. And then it asks your data preferences to help improve cursor, share your data or not. Uh, I'll select privacy mode and then continue. And now we need to log in. So it's going to uh, prompt us to log in to Cursor. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once I have logged in, uh, I can go come back to Cursor. And now uh, I am actually logged in with the chat already popped open. But if it is not, you can actually toggle the AI pane, it, a pane at the top right. We zoom in so you can see it better right here. There are also some settings you can manage. For example, you can turn on and off models. I'm going to turn on Cloud 3 Opus so I can refer to it. I'm going to turn on GPT-4 Turbo. And once you do that, let's say, you can also use your OpenAI API key uh, aside from using your cursor subscription. Uh, maybe I'll make another video for how to use cursor. But here, once we enabled, we can see all the models now available for us. We can choose and uh, pick from them. At this point, let's go ahead and install GitHub Copilot as well. I'm going to search in VS Code for GitHub Copilot. And just click install. Once you install GitHub Copilot, the GitHub Copilot chat should be installed too. After that, we need to sign in using. You do. I believe it's the first month free. But after that, uh, you need to. I believe it's ten dollars a month or something like that. And now we have GitHub Copilot and the Copilot chat installed, and the chat appears right here, and we can chat with it just like that. So now we uh, have installed and are able to use Copilot Chat. And when we have a Python file, let's open a folder. So now that I have a folder, I should get uh, code completions from GitHub, a function that adds two numbers. And now it's going to automatically write. This is VS Code. Let's go ahead and do the same in Cursor. So we're going to go to Extensions and search for Copilot. And once we install Copilot, but the chat is being installed automatically. You can see your additional extensions once they are installed here uh, in the drop down right here. So, not at the very left, but at this drop down. We again have to see GitHub. Uh, we have to copy this code, I believe, paste it here and continue and give authorization. And then we should be all set up here. Now, there's a, a little bit of a caveat here with, let's, let's actually make a test.py file. And as you can see now, a function that adds two numbers works just as well here. So GitHub Copilot is completing, but we also have Copilot++ completions, which comes with cursor. Uh, as you can see now, this is the suggestion that cursor made. So they, and you both accept their completions with the tab key. So cursor suggests to turn off GitHub Copilot, and you can do that by clicking on it and disable completions. You can always turn it back on and off. It's really up to you. And if you want to have a chat available, it should usually show up right here, but it didn't. Perhaps it needs a restart. Let's go ahead and do that. And actually, let's go ahead and find cursor and pin it to our test bar as well, right next to VS Code, and start it from there. Yeah, as you can see, the chat has appeared here. This is for Copilot chat. I can pin it here and actually talk with Copilot chat. So I have two separate completion endpoints. Uh, in the middle, I have Copilot and Copilot++. Plus Plus. On the right, I have Cursor chat. And on the left, you have Copilot chat. So it's really a convenient place. Let's go ahead and select our uh, Python environment as well. 
select Python interpreter, Python interpreter, and let's select basic. And once we start command prompt, we should also see basic is now activated. So now I believe the only thing left to do is to install Node.js so we can run JavaScript files as well. For that, I did a Node.js download. I'll, I'll put these links in the description. I'm just going to download Node.js from the Node.js.org. During the installation process, we want to ensure that NPM Package Manager and Add the Path is selected and uh, NPM Package Manager is included. Once it is downloaded, I'm going to run it. Let me go ahead and close my IDEs uh, just in case. All right, and I'm going to say next, accept the terms, next. And the PM package manager is selected, I believe. It'll be installed, okay. And then add the path, selected as well, it seems. And here it says automatically install the necessary tools, uh, install Chocolati, for example. I'm just going to go ahead and select that as well. So this chocolate that we selected is taking a long time to install. I'm not exactly sure if you absolutely need it. Uh, you may not, so you may wish to skip it, but we, we can check if Node and NPM are installed by doing Node-V and NPM-V, and we have both of them installed. So we go back to our cursor, and we should actually have the Node.js installed. And in our cursor, we can actually run this script.js, which is going to console.log test. And when we run it, we see that Node.js has been successfully installed. The Chocolata installation is a bit of an issue for Node.js, so you can maybe skip that. Everything is working now. I can work on my projects, both from VS Code and Cursor. So everything's looking good. So we have covered how uh, to use Miniconda with VS Code and Cursor to specify Python environment. And we looked at the useful extensions along with Copilot and Copilot Chat and how to install Node.js. In the remaining minutes of the video, I'd like to talk about my latest app, AutoStreamer Live version 3. AutoStreamer allows you to create courses about anything you like. For example, we just installed uh, Node.js. We can say Node.js. Since actually I'm up, of course, I don't have my environment variable set up with OpenAI API key, but I just got that. And I can actually show you how to set up your API keys in the environment variables. Just go to search, type in EMV. Click on edit the system environment variables and here click on environment variables and here you're going to say an AI API key and then I'm just going to paste it and click OK and then I'm going to say OK and back out of that. So I have set my OpenAI API key so next time I start this app it should pick it up but I can also paste it right here and then generate course we said about Node.js. It could have been about anything. We can also adjust how many chapters we would like to generate. So now we are generating course outline. Also, I like to mention once you have your API key in your environment variables, you can import OS and easily access it with get and whatever the name that you have given to that key. So you don't have to expose your uh, API keys. Okay, our curriculum is being created. We can actually go and take a look. This is the Node.js curriculum. It is actually looking good. Now that we've created it, I can actually select it. And then I can say generate course and a whole new course website is going to launch. And in just a few seconds, we'll be able to both listen and learn about Node.js in a structured course-like manner. Yes. Understanding Node.js is foundational for... I can also pause it and stop this generation and I can modern resume Modern web it. development. So if I was actually recording, maybe making an educational video, I can record this or live stream it. I can also generation and I can launch my other courses that I have created, for example, how about all great of the world? It's going to launch now, and this whole course is available. Socratic method and play. You can also, of course, I'm going to go ahead and stop the server and uh, just to show you, you can actually generate different voices. And, that. and once these courses are generated, uh, actually, you can go to open folder, and this is uh, everything that you need index.html and all the files for you to be able to deploy this course online. Uh, by using AutoStreamer, I have actually deployed multiple courses online. One of them is Learn Python Fast. I'll put this link in the description too. Python 2 versus Python 3. So, so this really helps you learn anything that you're looking for very quickly. If you wanted a short course, you can set the chapters to one. So you can actually download a demo of AutoStreamer from the autostreamer.live website. Link will be in the description. You can watch a short video on it. When you click on the free download, it will open up a 
Google Drive where you can download it by using this button and you use autostreamerdemo.exe. It also comes with a guide video. If you want to download the full app, you can go to click on that and it'll take you to my Patreon shop. Currently it's available for $200. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.